is ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Thank you for joining us on Core TV News at 7. I am Frank Omalape. Uh, here are some of the stories falling in at this hour. Boko Haram's leader, Abubakar Shekau, says he has created an Islamic caliphate in the northern, northeast Nigeria town, Kosa Abarono State, seized by the insurgents earlier this month. In a video posted online by the terror group, Shekau says, Thanks be to Allah, who gave victory to our brethren in the town of Goza and made it part of the Islamic caliphate. Abubakar Shekau declared in the 52 minutes video that Goza in Baruno State now has nothing to do with Nigeria. He stressed that by the grace of Allah, Boko Haram will not leave the town. We have come to stay, says Shekau, who has been designated a global terrorist by the United States and sanctioned by the UN Security Council. United Nations humanitarian office earlier this month confirmed reports that Goza was under rebel control. Boko Haram is also believed to be in control of other areas near Goza in southern Baranu, as well as large swathe of terri territory in northern Baranu and at least one town in neighboring Yobi state. As the battle against insurgents in the northeast part of Nigeria rages on, the issues generated by the war continues to grow. A security expert, Richard Moa, has called on all Nigerians to come together for the fight, which he says can only be won by a collective effort. Moa, while speaking after appearing as a guest on a call that just program explained that the federal government must encourage all Nigerians to join the fight against Boko Haram, just as it has done in the fight against Ebola virus. No, um, whether there's equipment or we don't have enough equipment or we don't have um, good equipment as the one the Boko Harams are using, that doesn't mean that uh, they must desert. You know, the, what, the, what, the, what the code says is clear. If you desert, you'll be caught, Masha. So the, the, chief of, uh, the chief of army staff or chief of defense staff that said it is right. So um, what I'm going to just ask the government to do is to know to to make sure that these people are happy and they have good equipment on the issue of alleged mutiny and threat of death sentence for cowardice by the military authorities Amar says soldiers are not allowed to desert or rebuild against authorities for any All reason I'm saying is However, the government to let's take security the let's take politics out of it there's no ruling party there's no position party when it comes to security when 9 11 happened in America what happened the Republican and the Democrat, they came together and they worked and they, what did happen? So the point I'm making here is that for us to get insurgency out of this, out of this country, all hand must be on deck, I repeat myself again, there must be politics out of it. Security has issued an alert on the thefts of a regalia of a Catholic nun in Kwano. It fears that the perpetrators may plan to use the outfit for terror acts. DSS spokesperson Mary Linoga says in a statement that 13 pieces of the religious outfits were stolen from a tailor's shop during the week in southern Gary area of Kano. The state security outfit says its concerns stem from recent trend of female suicide bombings in that part of the country. It therefore wants Nigerians to exercise greater vigilance with users of such attires by soliciting cooperation from members of the public through provision of useful information. A group under the aegis of Northern Adamawa and Southern Bruno elders has urged the federal and the state government to find lasting solution to the recurring attacks in the areas. The chairman of the steering committee, Paul Wampana, made the call at the meeting of the group in Abuja on Saturday. 
Wampana told journalists that the meeting was called to discuss how the group could assist the people who had been affected by terrorist attacks. He says the group will get the statistics of the people that had been affected by the attacks so as to avoid the repeat of what happened after the 2012 flood disaster. He added that Northern Adamawa and Southern Boronu elders is non-partisan, non-political and non-sectarian group. The police have launched investigation into an alleged attempt by a police inspector to assassinate the Commandant General of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, Adi Abolori. First Public Relations Officer Iman Ojuku says the mill followed a claim by the NNCDC spokesman Emmanuel Oke that the unnamed policeman threatened to shoot at Abolori. Oke had said the incident happened shortly after a team led by the NNCDC Commandant General arrested some suspected uh, pipeline vandals and oil thieves in the Korodu area of Lagos. The NSCDC spokesman says the armed police team arrived at the scene and told NSCDC Commandant General that the area belonged to the police and that he has no right to be there. The police, however, say in a brief statement that the allegation is being investigated and the outcome will be made public soonest. As part of the ongoing reorganization in the Nigerian police force, Acting Inspector General Suleiman Abba has ordered with immediate effect the posting of eight Deputy Inspectors General of Police and 28 Assistant Inspector General of Police to various departments, zonal commands, and formations of the force, while charging the senior officers to bring their experience to bear on their new postings. The Acting Inspector General of Police urges the public to partner closely with the force in need determination to ensure improved safety and security in the country. Moving away from that story, now Nigeria striking doctors have agreed to suspend their industrial action and return to their duty posts from Monday morning. The Nigeria Medical Association arrived at this resolution at an emergency delegate meeting in Abuja briefing newsmen at the end of the meeting. Uh, NME President Kayode Obimbe says the strike was suspended after considering the current health challenges posed by the Ebola virus. We suspend the strike action in the interest of urgent national emergencies while negotiations continue. Consequently, all medical and dental doctors are hereby directed to resume duty at their working posts with effect from 08 hours of Monday, 25th August 2014. Two months of salary arrears or relativity have been paid, and this is a beginning of redress of injustice which we have been encountering for the past 22 years. As we know before, the areas will have been calculated for 22 years, but we just said calculate for six months, which shows how magnanimous and patriotic doctors are. We have also been able to extract from the government that is need to, re to, to, to review the hazard allowance. In the phases of Ebola, hazard allowance was still 5,000 Naira per month for a doctor. Government has realized that this was indeed injustice. So we have achieved something and these are the reasons why we now felt with the outbreak of Ebola and all the cries of the people I think we should just subject all the others because you know we had a 24 point demand all others we are continuing on negotiation table while we face the attack of Ebola and all the incidental diseases that are ravaging the country. The popular Liberty Stadium in Ibadan was filled to capacity Saturday as the Transformation Ambassadors of Nigeria Tan held a rally to persuade President Angola Jonathan to the contest 2015 presidential election. Olaju Mokeolatuji broke by this report from Ibadan. <laughs> First in the Southwest series of rallies planned for the six geopolitical zones to urge Jonathan to return for a second term. Added to this is an enlightenment on the achievements of the Jonathan administration. 
This women say it is only Jonathan that demonstrates a genuine effort in political will to give every part of the country equal sense of belonging. This, they say, is why Nigerians have massively turned out to urge him to contest the 2015 presidential election. The Yoruba people have always supported President Goodluck Jonathan, but propagandists have said otherwise. So today is the day of proof. It's just to show that the Southwest so they were solidly behind Mr. President and were urging him to run for a second tenure. And you can see the response of the people. They are willing to support him. It's not a question of we have to go and start begging them. It's something that we all yearn for. It's something that we're all waiting for. The email, we are here to give our support to Jonathan second time. He's a president who has done wonders. Some key players in the transformation program say the president has done well in transforming the nation's economy and deserved all entreaties to return to office for another term. Well, today is a day that uh, a group of Nigerians under the ages of the transformation ambassadors of Nigeria have come to test the ground whether the Eurobars will endorse Jonathan for second time. And it is very impressive and very heartwarming that the result is a resounding yes. This for me is a show of support for Mr. President across the length and breadth of our dear country. And I think that I feel personally fulfilled because the president has not disappointed our people. We can now see how people of the Southwest are supporting Mr. President's presidency. And for continuity's sake, that Mr. President should go ahead with second term. With the Yoruba people are in the support for this career. What is continuity? I, I think to see the amount of outpouring in this place is quite incredible. It tells you how much the people of this country love President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan. And I appreciate what he has done for this country. from Nigeria time. It's an NGO here to us gathering friends and one wishes of uh, Mr. President to showcase achievements meritoriously to qualify for the next election. Southwest caucus, Southwest version, you know, we are holding today. And about 2 million signatures have been signed towards this. That shows that we are ready for Mr. President now. Exactly six months from now, Nigerians will be heading to the poll for the 2015 general elections. Let's set up people here and come out to express the love, support, and joy for the administration and achievements of President Goodluck Jonathan. David is so much in his agenda, and I'm begging on him to seek a renewal for his mandate. What do you believe? I'm not to make a last to do Call TV News, battle. The leadership of the People's Democratic Party in Kaduna has endorsed President Golok Jonathan for a second term in office. The leader has also passed a vote of confidence on Governor Muktaro Rahman Yero at a stakeholders meeting. Speaking at the occasion, Speaker of the House of Assembly says PDP lawmakers are rooting for Yero who became governor after his predecessor Patrick Yakoa died in a helicopter crash in December 2012. Local government chairman from all the 23 council areas also endorsed Yero and foreclosed the possibility of primaries in the state. Responding, the governor who spoke in House says they believe in destiny and used the opportunity to declare his interest in seeking a return to office. Meanwhile, not all PDP stalwarts from Southern Cardona are prepared to support Governor Yero's ambition. They used the stakeholders' meeting to counter a resolve by a faction of the Southern Kaduna people to endorse the governor for PDP's ticket. The party members accuse Yero of being a stooge of Vice President Namad Istanbul, but he insists he is only interested in good governance. They will endorse the Mr. President, but we've not taken a decision on the governor. Primaries will still be conducted. That is when we see, we will see whether endorsement is real or not. If you have anything against me, come out and confront me. 
Stop aligning me with Vice President Namadi Sambu. Tara Malanyaro is a mature person. I have personal views and opinions as well as likes and dislikes. Challenge my leadership if you are not satisfied with my performance. I was at the time a commissioner, at another point deputy governor, and now governor in the state, all within a period of five years. Point at anybody with such records in the state. So with this, I am assuring the good people of Kaduna State that I will ensure continuity of my predecessor project in the state. Some members of the All Progressives Congress have uh, clamoring for Kano State Governor Rabi Kwankwaso to join the race for the party's presidential ticket. The members addressed a press conference in Abuja where they outlined what they say are qualities that stand Kwankwaso out in Nigeria's main opposition party. The politicians have also firmly approved Kwankwaso Group to facilitate their quest. He has run the executive aspect of the government, he was governor two times, and he also was deputy speaker. That means the National Assembly also he has basic uh, uh, experience to manage them. He also was minister of defense. These are key factors that uh, bring about good leadership, and that is why we feel he can, he can. We are saying we have seen good qualities, or better qualities in him. So we will agitate him, we will force him to contest. We have come together, welded by a strong belief in the Kwankwasia ideology, who seeks essentially to propagate selfless service to the Nigerian people. Our collective aim and objective is to humbly persuade His Excellency to agree to lead Nigerians as our preferred, preferred presidential candidate in the forthcoming presidential election come 2015. We have come to this compelling and convincing resolution after dispassionately assessing all the prospective presidential candidates of our great party. And after, consider, after due consider, and after due consideration, we have come to the conclusion that His Excellency is incontestably the man that the, man, the, the, that the cup fits. You're watching Call TV News at 7. Take a short break. We'll be back with stories outside Nigeria. Stay with us. You can now watch Call TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website, www.calltvnews.com. Click on live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Call TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Call TV, leave a space, then news. Call TV News, a 24-hour news station. Glad to have you join us another edition of The Political Arena, the most detailed and incisive political show. If you are a sitting governor and the opposition is able to stomach structure against you, that means you are wicked to the people. So to be able to attack and the legitimate authority to govern this country. Give me 20 minutes to move or they will shoot me. He has no chance for survival. If he likes himself, this is the best time to get out before it very The PDP is the rule of right to his faith. So anybody who thinks that government will fold his hands and allow miscreants to take over the streets of our own state and cause havoc is deceiving himself. The good, bad, ugly and beautiful sides of the Nigerian political system. Join me every Sunday at 9.15 p.m. on 40 News. Glad to have you back on Call TV News at 7, now outside Nigeria. Iran's Foreign Minister Mohammed Javad Zarif says Tehran is working to help combat jihadist-led militants but does not have soldiers in Iraq amid a renewed push for a key oil refinery. United States was warplanes have launched more than 90 airstrikes against Islamic State jihadis in Iraq since August 8, has said operations against the group in Syria 
may also be necessary. Washington has also ramped up its rhetoric over the beheading in Syria of abducted American journalist James Foley, calling it a terrorist attack against the U.S. Iraq is struggling to regain ground loss to a major ISIS-led militant offensive which began in June and quickly overran large areas of five provinces, sweeping security forces aside. We are cooperating and working with the Iraqi government and with the Kurdish government in order to repel this very serious, atrocious group, Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammed Javad Zarif says. As Zarif visited Baghdad, security forces backed by air support battled a renewed militant push towards the Bayaj refinery, which once accounted for some 50% of Iraq's supplies of fined, refined petroleum products and has been targeted in the past. Well, that does it for news at 7 minutes. Thanks for watching. I am Frank Omalape. Don't forget, join us at 9.45 for our primetime news. Thanks for watching.